Okay, for assignment eight, we are going to take either our logo that we designed or our spot illustration. This is one of the spot illustrations. And we are going to add type to it. So we're going to do some type design. And we're going to turn in three things for this assignment. The first will be what's called a type solution. That is just black shapes, right? Or it can actually be grayscale. So black and white. Let's see if this opens up. There we go. And this is going to be a vector file, right? So this is one of those deceptive vectors that looks like it's like hand printed. And just like our vector line work, we're going to be working to modify these shapes, make it exactly what we want. We will learn some of the type tools within Illustrator that make things typesetting a little bit easier. Then we are going to give a color version. And so the coloring here is quite simple. It's just a gradient fill and then a, a soft blue drop shadow. And then we are going to put it with our spot illustration or our logo. You choose assignment six or seven and add a background to make a poster. Another example, another example, another example. Now, the best type solutions, this one definitely references an existing type solution, right? It's kind of a mashup. Um, definitely work both in black and white and in color. But just like your spot illustration, the color should only add. It shouldn't take away. And that can be tricky and then putting them all together. We're also gonna learn about backgrounds and texturing and how you can make the most of your spot illustration. So sometimes you'll have different versions, right? So this, this is one with little extra special effects with a texture overlay. Sometimes you can do um, less generic things with your type. So it starts with a sketch. And Sometimes I have students upload their sketch, sometimes I don't, we will see, but you should always start with a text blocking sketch, right? So this text blocking sketch works around your illustration and kind of shows where you want it to be placed. Then you work it out as a vector and then you color it. And then when you put it with your illustration, notice how this actually breaks the rules, you know, it makes it so it's not so readable, but it relies on context clues. And it kind of goes with the theme of humility, right? And your blocking sketch can be really loose. So this was for last semester. I actually designed two type solutions. So if you want lots of on type solutions, look at the assignment eight video from last semester. And they are both used for this poster. And then I ended up not using the top one. <laughs> I thought it was too busy. So once you have those elements, you can use them in lots of different ways. And then just like we're going to be able to do with our spot illustration, once we've gotten it to where we like it and it's finished, you, you'll have the option of selling posters, selling prints through sites like Redbubble. Right. So on and on. Maybe that was last semester. It's hard to remember. Okay. So how do we get started? Well, first you have to pick whether you're gonna do your logo or whether you're going to do your spot illustration. And this was a secondary you know, spot illustration that I demoed. And I've actually added a few things to this since we finished assignment seven. And those things I added were uh, duotone textures. So we're gonna be talking a little bit about that. But let me show you what it's made of. So I think the last time you saw this project, it was just flat color. So let's look at that. Put a white background down. Turn on the vector line work, right? Uh, I added a white offset. Then I did local flat color. So you guys kind of saw that. Then I copied the local flat color and darkened it a little bit. Then I did a duotone hard edge. You see that pretty clearly. 
So all the shadows were just kind of cut out with a lasso. And then what I did is I added a texture fill. I call it a grunge halftone texture. And this is the kind of thing we'll be able to do to finish off our spot illustrations and our posters in assignment eight. I'm not sure why it's not showing up, but let's see. I'll get it too. There we go. So that grunge halftone texture set on overlay, you see these little dots that come through. They kind of break up across everything. I only have it at 41% opacity. So it makes a big difference whether that's turned on or not. Come on. So that's with it off. That's with it on once it shows up. And then I have my vector line art on top of that. And so this is classic digital coloring where you have your black line art at the top as a protected layer, usually locked. And you have your blank white background underneath. And I'll actually usually label that blank white. And so it's like a sandwich with white bread at the bottom, black bread at the top. And then all of your colors, no matter how complicated they get, are like your fillings in the sandwich. But then there's the special effects. And if you have a sandwich and you want to make it extra fancy, what do you do? You might put an olive through a toothpick, right? Or a little umbrella, I don't know. Stick it on top of the black bread. And that's what the color holds are. Color holds are special effects on top of your black line art. And in this, I use color holds once, once they kick on and turn on. I'm gonna to have to reload Photoshop. But I use my color holds to uh, recolor it. So there we go, there we see them. So the black lines turned into brown lines here, turned into green lines here. I even gave those lines a slight gradient. And so those are color holds. Those are special effects on top of your black line work. And so that's my finished spot illustration. But now I might want to add text, not just the text of the speech bubble that was done by hand, but actual text, actual type, right? So how do I do that? Well, I can just do it in my sketchbook, or I could, what I did is I just printed out the spot illustration just on a cheap printer. And now I'm going to use FaceTime and use its camera, just like you would with your sketchbook, to show you how I blocked in the text. This is called text blocking. You're just thinking about what space do you want it to fill. Because type takes up space. And spot illustrations are all about the size that's allowed, the shape that's made, because it doesn't have a background yet. So what I'm going to do is just do a screen grab from FaceTime of my type blocking. And I'll close it up. I'll open it up in preview, use tools to flip it horizontally so it's no longer a mirror image. I'll use the adjust color tools, auto level it because I'm in deep shadow here up in the front of the classroom. Brighten some of its shadows. And then sharpen it. And then this is a nice trick in, in a preview. If you select an area and want to crop to it, you just use Command K and it will crop it. And all I'm really interested in is this, right? All right, so I've got that. That's now on my desktop. Now for this one, for my logo, I wanted a different kind of type blocking. And so I wanted this to feel more like a, a restaurant logo. So it needed a little bit of explanation to go with it. So I'm gonna go to FaceTime again. And I just made a circle to contain it. 
So Command Shift 4 will give me a targeted screen grab on a Mac. I let go and get it. Open it up in preview. Go to tools, flip it horizontally. Notice my circle isn't perfect here. That's why we're going to use the computer. <laughs> that makes perfect circles very nicely. And we're going to learn in Illustrator how to do this. Put type uh, on a curve on a circle, which comes in really handy. And I'm going to clean it up. Sharpen it. Okay, now I have two examples of text blocking sketches to get us started. All right, now the next step. If I go to my assignment, I've created an assignment eight folder. I've already uh, started looking at inspiration, right? If the text is, in this instance, the unicorn, it can be helpful to look at lots of different solutions that have been done. There's a lot of type design in the world. Some of it bad, some of it good. For the unicorn, right? It gives me a sense of the personality that this word can have. From the generic, to the specific, to the childish, to the hand-drawn, to the more modern to the silly, right, to the classic. And so that might give you an approach. But we're not gonna have to hand draw our type necessarily, not unless you want to. What we can do is actually find typefaces. And the link for this is in the assignment sheet. But the site we're gonna go to, which collects a lot of these uh, designer opens, uh, Creative Commons open typefaces is dafont.com, dafont.com. Because people are just always adding to these, right? And so these are some nice kind of cutesy ones that were just added. But I'm going to search. You might want graffiti-inspired typefaces. You might want trash-inspired, I wonder what that is, typefaces. Interesting, that's kind of fun. Um, I really like letterpress, which was the first kind of uh, printing press, right? And one of my favorites to use is this one, Cocoa Goose. So if I want to use Cocoa Goose, I mean, this one's kind of nice. What do you do? You can just download it. And we'll see what that does. But you can also try it out. So if I click on one of these, I can try my type here, both upper and lowercase letters, the unicorn, and submit it. And it will show me how that works. So this type, most of these types are limited because they're free to use, but this type is only an uppercase, right? But if I go back to all of these and I type in the unicorn, I can kind of compare how it looks, right? That one is kind of nice. I like it. So let's try something else. Um, maybe not letterpress, maybe just modern. Or maybe childish. See if they have anything under that. These are just different tags. And then I can see how it might work. This is nice. The unicorn. This is cutesy. I actually like this one quite a bit. So I'm going to download it. Now, don't download a ton. Not right now. Maybe three or four. And then I'm going to show you how you put them into your computer. So we go to downloads. I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, <laughs> date created. I was hoping they would all show up. 